So here we are on our next day adventure here. And we've done a little prep work on the on the top end. We thought that maybe we'd deal with that today, but apparently it doesn't want to deal with us too well. We have one bolt come out. One, two, three, all had to be drilled out just to get them out. And we've developed even just the tiniest, slightest crack on the top here. And we've been PB blasting it and we just can't get it apart. So not much hope in here, but we'll blast it for a night and see what will happen in the future. But right now, of course we got a middle end there or midsection to clean up. Basically that's all it nearly needs to be done is cleaned up. And fork needs to be greased up a little bit, but well, that's something else we'll look at in the future. Today, it's all about this guy. This guy's our bottom end for our, I believe it's a 2.16, I'm not sure, gear ratio uh, drive. And part of the deal is, is we've got two bolts that are frozen up here in the top. We had to drill out. Didn't really come out too well. And, uh, and uh, down here, we got, of course, we got to take our trim ring off, which really doesn't have to come off for the bearing case to come out, but these two big guys got to come out. And then, this is our special Volvo part number 6,300,017-Y. And all it is is basically an all-thread bolt and, of course, another bolt on the back side of it here. And what it's that it's supposed to lead to do is you grab this guy would you come along here and uh, put your come along on I mean, I'm sorry your dent puller and you give it a yank and it's supposed to pull it right out of the case but after dealing with taking it apart and also dealing with the top end uh, again we don't have much much hope and we kind of got this idea over here maybe using our motor hoist chain it down to the one to the legs and see if we can put maybe a ton of pressure on it or so. I think it should handle that easily and not have to worry about bending at the distance. So we'll see how it works out, but at the moment we need to get these bolts out so it doesn't end up slicing somebody open like myself, of course. And uh, we'll set you up on the stand and get going. All right. First things we gotta get rid of is this rubber O-ring. Sometimes they stick to the midsection, a lot of times they stay in this groove. Also there's this little basket screen that sits in this oil hole here, which I'm going around backwards. Not in here, between it. So it just kind of sits there. I'm gonna throw that up on our baking pan. Don't let the wife ever throw away an old baking pan. Hey, they work great. But let's kick this thing in gear. We gotta burn some things out and get going, so. Sometimes you have to get medieval on some stuff here. Like I said, it's not been the easiest one, that's for sure. But as you can see, this is what really what a Volvo Polar consists of. And mine's a little cruder, but it's basically the same exact thing. And you know, it has a way of attaching to the prop shaft. And basically, it's a weight with a stick on the end, and it just costs a fortune to buy it. I've done everything I can. I've locked it upside down, right side up, backwards. I've pulled on it till I can't pull no more. So I've resorted to my old trick. And the last one I had was basically squeezing it between my motor hoist, but I have some super sharp end, sharpened end uh, screwdrivers. A couple of them have been broken off over the years. So they've got kind of a really nice point. And 
sacrifice a tiny bit of damage right here you know where they go in but a lot of times it's about the only thing that will get the job done short of I don't know hooking it up with a couple chains to a pickup truck and a big old tree stump but I'd rather keep the axles in my van if I if I could so what we're gonna do is set you back down and uh, we'll proceed to beat this thing and like I said don't don't be afraid to get on the floor with them you know I mean it, they're big bulky things like like these bolts that come out of the top one of the reasons you don't see it on film is because basically that's what I did I just put it on the floor here and pulled them out because it was just a whole lot more leverage and if you take it apart that's what you're doing anyway so don't afraid to throw it down See the dust. That's salt. I just thought I had it loose here. So, I'll have to edit this part out. Of. Got ourselves a big old gear. It's the bearing case. This holds the bearing inside the case. And that just slings oil right there. It's an oil slinger. It slings oil up into the water, into the top half of the outdrive. And there's a seal in there, and that's about it. For the bearing case itself. We're gonna set precious down over here over on the A big old metal tray. Before we fall over that. All right. Another step. Since we have to take the bolt out that holds the vertical gear to the horizontal gear. Right down in there. The thing about it is, is you gotta be careful. There's one side that's a little flat spotted, and they bend the washer over top of it to lock it. And they bend it over, I mean, to stay that way. This one looks like it's got all kinds of marks in it. But you gotta get that up and flat up against the gear before you do anything else. And then, like I said, what I do is, <clears throat> is I take, which is basically the you know, the old uh, shaft sleeve. I have one I bought off of eBay and a wrench. And basically you put this on like so. And you have the wrench on it, which locks that in. And basically you take the monster bar and you break it off. Or not break it off, I keep saying that. But basically you unbolt it. And from there, there'll be another step of getting that shaft to pop out. But we'll show you that in a little while. But back to fast forward, I'm sure now. All right, we have our, we got our nut off. I just ground wrestling that dog. But what we're going to do now is we're going to take our, get our shaft to come out of the top. And it's usually because it's not really pressed on, but it's, it's you know, like I said, it's 125, 130 pound bolt, whatever it is, 115 pound bolt that holds it on. So 
What I like to do is I just put my maul in there, get it wedged in between the case, get myself one other, you know, wedge, chisel, basically, oversized. Something that really isn't going to scuff up the, the threads or anything. It's pretty darn smooth. And, uh, should be able to give it a couple taps once it pops. I mean, it only takes a couple pounds usually, but with this motor, or motor, this outdrive, it's been a challenge. there we go. It's just that easy. The thing you got to be cautious about though, there is some needle bearings inside around that gear and as soon as I <clears throat> pull the shaft out and this gear comes out, they'll all fall out. But, if the shaft comes, put it over here, right inside. These actually want to come out with the with the bearing, which is interesting. Yeah, well, I lost them. Oh, well. there's our gear, our gear for our small outdrive, small small motor, and uh, here's our bearings. It's basically they sit up there with the grease until they put the gear in, and then the gear holds it in place. It's usually a little shim right here. But this will all be changed. I forgot to mention when we took the, the upper shaft out, there is shims also. Right down here, where this bearing sits. Of course, it sits like so. So it's kind of like that. A lot of times, one will stick to it, and one will stick to this, and but they're all here. And you need to also keep them in order, so they will be where they're supposed to be. Because basically, this this set of shims holds this bearing up, which holds that bearing up which holds against the race of the midsection, which, again, if it's all screwy, it's either going to rattle and break, or it's going to be too tight and it's going to burn off. So, Just to say, once again, um, don't be afraid to get on the floor with the thing. I mean, honestly, these are big, solid, sometimes they're just put together and they're been welded together so bad that you know, unless you've got like a huge shop, it's got all these giant vices and such, you're never going to be able to get them apart. And I'm surprised, honestly, like I said, how this one actually came apart. It could have been a whole lot worse than what I thought it would be. Don't look like much damage at all. So, we'll see once it gets cleaned up. More to come.